Let me start off by talking about divorce is gone crazy. Divorce is on steroids. Divorce is everywhere. God does not want you to get divorced. Covenants were made by God. A covenant is what takes place when you exchange vows. With Abraham, it was the circumcision that was given as a sign of the covenant. With Noah, it was the rainbow that was given as a sign of the covenant. A lot of times people shake hands or they sign the contract, amen, as proof that two people have entered into an agreement, into a covenant, um, forsaking all others in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer. God is a witness between those vows, and the Bible teaches us it's better to vow a vow than to be slack to pay. When you give your word, the devil himself is going to throw everything at you to try to destroy the foundation that you're laying, the covenant that you're building. Thank God for the blood of Jesus because in the Old Testament, breaking covenant was, was uh, 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 literally penalized by death. The punishment was death. When you broke your covenant, put them to death. Thank God that when we break our covenant, when we break our word, we're not put to death. If you have been in a part of divorce, you have broken covenant, then you need to pray and ask God to forgive you. He is faithful and just to wash you and to forgive you and cleanse you of your sin. And then what you need to do is turn the page in your life and keep on going. Go on and get married. Go on and, 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 and find that person that you believe is for you. God will not pick your husband for you. God will not pick your wife for you. That means marriage is going to be your choice. Marriage is who you choose. The Bible tells us, my God, that to marry whom you think best. And the key word in the text is think. There are a lot of people that get married and they don't think. You got to think about it. You got to, I mean, I know she looked good today, but what's she going to look like 20 years from now? You got to think. You got to use your mind. You got to put some investigation into it. You got to do some reconnaissance. You got to do some due diligence if you're going to cause your marriage to last. Let me tell you, there is nobody. I don't care how y'all still giggling at each other, smile. You got smirked today. You copping a little, you little touchy, touchy feely right there, even in the house of God, while the other person on the other side of you is madder than 15 dogs because they sitting there wishing they had somebody. And it's wonderful right now, but I'm telling you, there are some roadblocks up the road. There are some chuck holes. Have y'all hit any chuck holes this, year, this winter yet? There's some holes in the road. They will tear your marriage up. They will cause your, oh, oh, you riding off. You got a flat tire. You will bust the whole right front end of your vehicle, amen, dealing with the stuff that we deal with in this life. They're not happy in their marriage, so they watch TV so they can try to be happy through some lines that somebody wrote and actors that are acting it out. Watching this crap on TV and it forms these ideals in your mind about what you believe is supposed to be going on in your reality and you want your husband to do like they do on TV and you want your wife to be like they are on TV and you don't understand this is all smoke and mirrors this is all fictitious this is phony the finest women in the world divorce not once not twice three times why why are the reasons what are some of the reasons that things don't last you know building a marriage that lasts why don't they last let's talk about the runner the sprinter uh, uh, um, he doesn't last because he burns out everybody say burn out, burn out. You don't want to get burnt out in your marriage marriage is not a sprint it is a marathon therefore you must pace yourself keep it real keep it real can't do this today we don't have that kind of money right now we have to plan in other words Things don't last because people burn out and marriage is a marathon. It's not a sprint and you, you don't want to enter into it with unrealistic expectation. You got to take some trips. You got to take some vacation. You got to take some time off. You got to have some romantic dinners. You got to change it around. You got to change the house around. You got to get something new. You got to, things don't last because of misuse. You just misuse the thing. You cannot misuse your wife. You cannot misuse your husband. You cannot mistreat him. He is not a money making machine. He's a man. She's not a sex machine. I know you sing the song, but she is a woman. Is you must carve out time, carve out space, amen, and push stuff back out the way, whether it's the kids, the job, the church, whatever, and save your marriage. 
temperature. Some of your marriages, you're running hot. Some of you're running cold. You're just not at the right temperature. You got to understand his temperature, her temperament, her temperature, and you got to learn how to keep it on chill. Most times, marriages will last when there's peace around. When y'all got a lot of hell, y'all fight all the time. You know, y'all always talking about guns and knives and don't make me crack you upside your head. I mean, the... You know, the police, the police, oh, okay, the Robinsons is calling again. We got to go over here and see them. Marriage is hard work. Yeah. And there are those that are single that say, oh, I want to be married. Oh, do you want to climb Mount Everest too? Are you also interested in learning Chinese trigonometry? Because they are one and the same. The Bible says that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You have to build a marriage, like you build a business, like you build a ministry, like you build your faith, like you build anything that you build. It starts with the foundation. The foundation must be love, and God is love. The marriage has got to be built on God.